am1240wgbb.com and 1240wgbb Freeport. This is Healthy Living Radio with your host, Dr. David Scharf, a compelling program featuring today's top healthcare professionals. Join us as we explore the latest treatments and technologies to provide better care in today's ever changing world of health and wellness. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Scharf. Good evening. You're listening to Healthy Living Radio, dedicated to bringing you the latest advances in health and wellness so you can live better, healthier, and longer. We're going to have a great show tonight. We have a great guest, uh, Long Island's premier cosmetic dentist, Dr. Alan Moore. Alan, welcome to the show. Thanks, David. Uh, before we get started, uh, maybe you could just tell our listeners a little bit about uh, where you practice, how long you've been in practice. Well, I've been practicing about 28 years, and I've been in Massapequa Park now for the last 25. Graduate of NYU College of Dentistry back in 83, and then after that did a residency program for a year at the uh, Peninsula Hospital. After that, we then continued the education by f- going to two premier uh, continuing education facilities. One is the uh, Dawson Institute, and the other one is the Pankey Institute. And what are those? You know, when you graduate from dental school, you have a basic knowledge. And then there are some things that you just never get to know, whether you read, try to read about them. But um, the Pankey Institute teaches you about philosophy, how to take care of people, uh, we treat people, we don't treat teeth. And then they also teach you what's called occlusion, how your teeth come together, the bite. Uh, the Dawson Institute also combines that, but they also teach you about uh, how the bite uh, affects the TMJ or the joint of your jaw. So these are advanced things. Are, are those things they teach in dental school typically? Not at all. You get a smatter, just the tip of the iceberg in dental school. And when you, you, know, when you graduate, ultimately you're going to come across cases that are very complex, very difficult, and you think you can fix them. But uh, it's not just the fix, it's the longevity of the fix. You want these cases to last a long time. You know, we're going to talk about cosmetic dentistry tonight. And, um, you know, a lot of dentists call themselves cosmetic <clears throat> dentists or on their sign outside their office. Absolutely. Everybody has cosmetic dentists Absolutely. on their sign. But what do you think it is, and you truly are the premier cosmetic dentist on Long Island, what is it that makes someone a cosmetic dentist? Well, you have to, you know, first you have to pick an organization that you feel uh, will provide you with the knowledge uh, to treat patients in a cosmetic manner. Uh, the Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry is the largest organization which I belong to and I've been a member of for quite a few years. And then you have to find courses that will teach you from the basics on up. Uh, some of my mentors, I'm sure you know their names from Larry Rosenthal and Bill Dickerson, uh, you know, who created LVI. These are people who have attended multiple courses over the last 27 years of my career until I got to a point where not only was I proficient in it, but I started to teach it. I know also, uh, we were talking before the show, you teach at Peninsula Hospital now, you're the chief of their... Jamaica, uh, Jamaica Hospital. Jamaica Hospital, Hospital. sorry. You, That's okay. Uh, you're the chief of their uh, cosmetic dentistry section. Yes. And also, um, companies call upon you to evaluate their materials, don't they? Tell me a little about that. Well, what happened about a little over a year ago, we got a phone call from Shannon Pace. Um, Shannon is a mover and a shaker in dentistry. She's a uh, dental assistant who was at one point working for uh, John Cranham, who's also on, on staff at the uh, Dawson uh, facility. <clears throat> and Shannon contacted us to get involved with a company called Contemporary Product Solutions. Uh, I've, somehow I got the title and the position to get very involved. I'm now the co-editor. But what we do is we, we do testings on existing products. Uh, when I say testings, it's not like we're doing experiments. We're actually utilizing these products in our office. Some of them we use at the hospital. And we give evaluations as to how many, how many stars or how many diamonds actually they are. So we're giving a rating. It's almost like consumers for dentistry. The advantage of it is, you know, we're, every, every magazine we get is pushing us to try this pro- a product. You have no idea whether the product is good or bad. But if a colleague of yours told you, hey, you've got to try this stuff because it actually works, that's the purpose of this company. That's great. So you get kind of a peek at what's coming or what's new. Absolutely. And it uh, yeah. sounds like you're way ahead of the curve in terms of other dentists and knowing what to use, what to avoid. If, Probably, you, yeah. if, if, you ask my, if you ask my staff, we try to stay at least six months to a year ahead of the curve. That's fantastic. So let's talk about cosmetic dentistry a little bit. Who's your typical patient that comes in for cosmetic dentistry? Well, patients can range anywhere from, you know, young elementary school children to my senior patients. Uh, my most senior patient uh, is now 95 years old, and uh, she came in for a checkup and said, you know, I don't like my four front teeth. 
And at 95, you know, you'd wonder at why are you making a decision at this point in life? She didn't like her four front teeth, and ultimately we, we did some crowns for her, some old porcelain crowns, and she loved them. But I say on average, our patients range between the ages of, say, 40 to about 70. They're patients who maybe they're, you know, they're well-established in the business world. Uh, some of them may be older. They may be, may be retirees. Their kids are out of the house. Uh, their mortgages are paid, so they have more of a discretionary situation. Mm. They can do things for themselves. You know, they're joining gyms. They they want to look good and feel good, so now they want to have their teeth done. What do you think is the biggest barrier? You know, our people at home are listening to this, and maybe they're thinking about their teeth or having a cosmetic enhancement. What do you think is the biggest barrier uh, people face in their mind to coming in and finding out what's involved in improving their smile? I think part of it's fear of the unknown, but I think the other part of it is the embarrassment the embarrassment um, in that they've been for so many years walking around uh, unable to smile, not willing to smile, hiding their smile, and they've decided that, um, you know what, it's just not worth it. And then one day they may wake up and look at a magazine or see someone, like a friend, who possibly changed their smile, and now they're wondering what they can possibly do. So what do you say to people who come in and say, I'm so embarrassed, I let my teeth go, I haven't been to the dentist in 10 years or 15 years? How do you make them comfortable? <laughs> Well, the trick is you have to, like, say, forget the past, let's move forward. Uh, forget the embarrassing things. There are a lot of things in our lives. You know, some of us, we gain weight, we lose weight. Um, we don't pay attention to ourselves on a regular manner, so maybe you didn't have your, check, your dental checkups uh, as often as you should. But what we should do now is just take a look at the options. You know, forget what you've had in the past. Look at, look at the options. Um, look in some magazines. How would you like to look? Mm -hmm. and, and maybe we can possibly do that for you. You know, it's funny. We had a, you had spoke about that woman who was 95, and um, uh, so many older people are, feel so youthful now. They look in the mirror, and their yellow teeth or their chipped teeth don't really match their personality. Uh, so uh, years ago, I think people used to think it was maybe frivolous to want to uh, improve their appearance. But like you said, people go to the gym. They wear nice clothes. They Absolutely. keep themselves in great shape. It's, it's really not frivolous at all. You know, your smile is probably the ultimate fashion accessory because you carry it around with you all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and when, when even our uh, more senior patients, when they come in and they want to bleach their teeth, lighten their teeth, they sometimes want one of those Hollywood white shades. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, you know, you're 70 some odd years old or 75. Do you think that that's really you? And they go, at this point in my life, I want to look the best. You know, I want, I want to do what's best for me. Uh -huh. You know, um, <clears throat> we were talking with a guest the other day, and she was saying, and I wonder if you've seen this too, you know, with the economy being the way that it is, it's, and the job market is so competitive, how you present yourself is so important that it's, you know, unfortunately we make uh, judgments about people based on how they look. And it's not necessarily ever right to judge a book by its cover, but when sometimes you see somebody with a missing tooth or a, a real cosmetic problem maybe people think things about them and she was telling me that she's had patients come in who are really out of work that are getting their smile fixed so that they can present themselves and look as good as they can I currently have a gentleman a new patient who uh, found our office via our website <clears throat> which is uh, www.smilecreationsforyou.com thanks for the plug mm -hmm. um, and he came into our office kind of embarrassed as matter of fact, very embarrassed very meek very timid a lot of broken teeth had gone through some pretty extensive dentistry let it all go and now he came in, and what he wants to do is he wants to um, redo all of his redo everything. Mm -hmm. uh, his decision was based upon he's now unemployed, and he wants to get his. Unfortunately, his parents had passed away. He had gone through a real tough time. He wants to get back into the workforce. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not the only patient that I've met who's wanted to redo their smile to get back into the workforce. Yeah, I would, I would imagine that's a pretty important thing. Absolutely. We're going to take a fast break. You're listening to Healthy Living Radio. I'm your host, Dr. David Scharf. This is Healthy Living Radio with Dr. David Scharf. Okay, we're back, and we're speaking uh, with Long Island's premier cosmetic dentist, Dr. Alan Moore. Alan, let's talk a little bit about the process. You know, Again, there are probably people sitting at home wondering, how in the world do you, are you going to make my smile better? Do I have to go ahead and trust you that I'm going to like how it looks? How do I know I'm going to like the way it looks before I go ahead? Take me through the steps a patient in your office will experience. Dave, it's a great question because a lot of times people come in and say, you know, I was recommended to you. I trust you. You do whatever you think is best. And unfortunately, we can't do that because everybody's got their own opinion. What's best for you may not best be best for the next person. So the process... Uh, is a lot of steps. We take photographs of your smile, we take photographs of your of your full face, we take molds of your mouth, and we put this on a machine called an articulator so we can see how your bite comes together. 
Um, we also do something called a smile analysis, which, al which allows me to measure the size of your teeth now, possibly what size they should be in relationship to the size of your face. There are different um, parameters that we use. Uh, there's something called the rule of golden proportion, which tells me about how big your teeth should be. And through all this, we then send this work to our laboratory, come up with a treatment plan. We show you a wax design, which is like a blueprint that we use to design your smile. And then the best thing that I found that works is um, we do some digital enhancements, almost like what the plastic surgeons do. You know, you go in to have your nose fixed. How is your nose really going to look? Or what kind of nose do you really want? So what we do is we show you before, and based upon the smile analysis, your input, as far as color, we will then show you what you can possibly look like after. So you show them on a computer monitor Absolutely. what it can look like when they're done. Yep. What's people's reaction like when you put that picture up, it's, the before and the possible after? It, what, what is it like? It's kind of like, oh my God, you know, let's they, let's start. They ever let's, cry? Do people ever cry yes, when like, they see let, what it can let's, look like? Let's start. Let's get this thing going. I would imagine the emotion comes up at that point. They've been holding it back and uh, yes. it comes gushing out. It's, it's one of the most motivating things because what I tell them is, although it's a digital enhancement, if I can see it in the picture, I kind of know I can do it in reality. And they're so willing at that point to start. What kind of changes do you see in people, you know, before and after? Uh, you know, so many people I would think are embarrassed of their smile. They hide their mouth, this sort of thing. What sort of changes do you see? Or what do people tell you when they've gone from, you know, the, the unattractive smile to a smile they feel confident about? A few of the things we see, besides the fact that their self-esteem goes up uh, tremendously, um, I can remember back going into the 80s when I treated a girl very quiet, very shy, very plainly dressed, no makeup, big space between her teeth, uh, almost like a Michael Strahan space. Uh, and after we got all done, she came in business suit, hair, nails, makeup, lipstick. And I said, like, what, what happened? And she goes, well, besides the fact I got a promotion at my job, <laughs> she goes, I feel amazing. I look amazing. And she was never a very vibrant person. It changed her whole personality. Um, some people, you know, they, they don't know um, how their lives can change by having a, a beautiful smile. Mm -hmm. That's something. Did you ever get somebody that, uh, you know, never got married, finally... They yes. fixed their smile and they came I'm and they brought you the wedding picture. Are you the, are you the matchmaker? I'm the guy. I'm the guy. I'm absolutely the guy. <laughs> Do you ever find people, uh, you know, before their wedding, before the kids are getting married, that that's the time that they say, I'm going to come in and take care of my smile now? Yes, because they all, everybody wants their pictures to look great. And it could be anything from simple, something simple as whether it's bleaching their teeth uh, to a small modification. Yeah. Now, you know, you mentioned bleaching. A lot of people go to the store and they, you know, put those strips on their teeth. Why would somebody go to the dentist to have their teeth bleached versus the strips or bleaching toothpaste? All, all forms of lightening or bleaching of your teeth can cause some degree of some sensitivity. And if you take it upon yourself as a consumer to buy whatever is over the counter, you have no idea what the possible side effects are. Each case is uh, uh, specific to, for example, if you come in, you tell us you have sensitivity then we're not going to want to use a process like Zoom, which is a power bleaching, a one-visit process that will do your both top and bottom teeth in one visit. Uh, we may want to do a home system where we can control the concentration of the solutions. You know, as a consumer, um, you should never take it upon yourself because you don't know what kind of damage it can do. If someone has crowns that are too dark, can they bleach those crowns? What are their no. options then? Uh, and we actually had a case like that today where a gentleman came in, two front teeth had crowns on, he wanted to make his teeth now match those crowns. And we explain it's usually the reverse. You achieve a color first by bleaching and then do the crowns. Porcelain is like a coffee cup. You can drink a thousand cups of coffee, the color never changes. What are the most common questions somebody should ask uh, that's gonna have cosmetic dentistry? You know, again, a lot of people are listening and they see cosmetic dentists on every sign. And again, I mean, you have, I think, impre uh, credentials which are unique and just the credentials alone tell Thank you, you that you've had a lot of training and y you must know what you're doing. Um, but how does the consumer decide when they go to a dentist's office, this is the guy that I want to enhance my smile? The very first thing that I would say is besides, you know, what, organi what cosmetic organizations do you belong to? How active are you in them? And what training do you have? You know, who, how'd you get your training? Who trained you? And then I really think that... Um, do people showing, really ask that? Should they be yes. embarrassed to ask that? No, not at all. Because you know what? Um, as you said, anybody can be called a cosmetic dentist. But, you know, how many cases did you do? Uh, but in our office, what we do, we, we, I have a published book. It shows our patients before and after. And there's hundreds upon hundreds of cases that the patients can see. And each case is different. On top of which, when you come in for a consultation, 
I have thousands of cases that I can show you the befores and the afters, and each case, you know, there may be one little thing that fits your need, and um, that sometimes helps a patient make a decision. Mm -hmm. Are all these cosmetic cases big cases? I mean, do people ever no. come in with a kind of a nice smile that just want a little, a minor little enhancement? Tweak. We can do something as, as limited as a um, little recontouring of your teeth. It's almost like using an emery board on your nails. We're just going to slightly shape your teeth different. I had a case where a girl came in with very short teeth, and she was expecting to do a big production. And all we did was uh, we used our diode laser to recontour her tissue and, it, and elongate those teeth. Then we bleached her teeth. She never did anything more than that. It was an inexpensive procedure, and she looks amazing. And then at the other end of the spectrum, I would imagine you know, some people who've been without dentistry for a <coughs> long time who, who have big issues, that those can be pretty complicated cases. Yes, and some of the complica complicated cases will take a while to do, uh, but we do mix and match. Some patients end up with crowns, veneers, uh, implant cases. Uh, you'll never know which one's which because cosmetically it all blends in. It just takes more time to develop the case, treatment plan the case, and then get the ultimate result. Yeah. It sounds like you like doing those complicated cases. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know whether I've been blessed, but I can sometimes see the end result prior to the case even being done, and my staff always wonders how I can do that. Do you ever get people come in that are redoing their cosmetic dentistry, that it was done somewhere else or done previously, they weren't happy with it, and now you're, you're trying to yeah. pick it up? Yeah, um, we've, we've done some uh, redos, if you, would, you know, want to say that, where people have gone to the supposed cosmetic dentist, and they were unhappy with the veneers or the crowns. They didn't match in color. They didn't match their teeth. They were too long, too wide. Or they ended up with crowns where they had the black line, you know, mm -hmm. the classic black yeah. line at the gum line. A lot of, a lot of uh, listeners ask me about that. So talk about that a little bit. Why do people get that black line around the gum? Tell our listeners. Okay. Well, traditionally, and, and still used to this date, are the typical crowns, which are called porcelain-fused to metal crowns. There's an underneath thimble of metal that uh, goes over your tooth, and the porcelain is baked or, or uh, placed over that. That's traditional. And if you get a little bit of recession around that area, you'll see the black line, which is basically the metal. In our office, uh, we try where possible to avoid that. So uh, at least in your top 10 teeth, uh, top or bottom uh, 10 teeth in your smile zone, we use all porcelain crowns. There is no metal in there. It's very biocompatible. And if you get a little bit of recession, you'll never see that black line. So why doesn't every dentist use that, those materials? It's a matter of being challenged. You know, uh, I was taught that uh, we do what's best for the patient today. Tomorrow there could be something new. And I usually don't jump on the bandwagon. We, we check, we do some research on the products just to uh, make sure that, you know, there's been longevity. Uh, we're not looking to experiment, obviously. And some of the newer products we've been using, the results are incredible. As a matter of fact, uh, the newer product we're using, it's actually as strong as, if not stronger than, the porcelain fused to metal. You know, one of my mentors once said, um, have, you been, uh, uh, have you been practicing dentistry 20 years or have you practiced, repeated your first year 20 times? And unfortunately, a lot of people repeat that first year 20 times and never take the time to learn and move into the newer materials, which are really much better materials. So Abs I, I think that's impressive. Absolutely. We're going to take a fast break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the technology in your office because I know we were talking before, before the show, and you've got a ton of great stuff we're going to talk about. So we'll be right back. You're listening to Healthy Living Radio with Dr. David Scharf. Okay, we're back with uh, Dr. Alan Moore, a uh, cosmetic dentist in Massapequa. And um, we were talking before the show, Alan, that you have tremendous uh, technology in your office. And the one that really caught my attention was um, the system you have for uh, detecting decay in teeth. And what most people are probably used to is going to the dentist and having the dentist stick that pokey thing in your tooth and seeing if it sticks, and then you know, uh-oh, I have a cavity. But you were telling me that the technology is way beyond that at this point. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Um, the uh, Spectra system, which is made by a company called Air Techniques, uh, was introduced to detect decay not just on the tooth but around the periphery of, periphery of a filling. Uh, we also have something called the Diagnodent, and the advantage of the Diagnodent also is that like, it, they, they're both laser machines. Uh, they work on a process which is called immunofluorescence. Think of it like a depth finder on a boat. It's like a, a, so, a sonar. There's light rebounding back. Um, what happens is we put the light on your tooth, and with the Diagnodent, a number comes up, and you hear an audible so, uh, a sound. The problem with it, though, however, is if you have decay around the filling or under a filling, that machine will not diagnose it. So we moved over to now the Spectra. The beauty of the Spectra is besides the fact that it's been 99.999% accurate, 
it will display a color on our TV screen. So you as the patient will see if the tooth is healthy, it's green. If decay is starting, it's blue. And then if it actually has penetrated the tooth deep enough to warrant a filling, it'll turn red, orange, or yellow. So I'll play devil's advocate. Don't patients ever say to you, yeah, but it doesn't it hurt. hurt. Absolutely. <laughs> so what do you say and actually, to that? <laughs> And actually, I have a patient who just recently, um, we, we picked up three areas of decay. And we also tell them that, by the way, um, you know, the explorer or the, or the pick, as we call it, um, if it's not sharp enough, we'll miss something. And when it's picked up on an x-ray, at that point, it's definitely way too late. Uh, you've then got a, a larger cavity. So the beauty of this is, is we're picking things up very early, uh, almost interceptive, and we can then provide conservative and less costly treatment. Um, one of, one of my patients actually said that, you know, she's so used to, and she's a young patient, so she's so used to the Explorer or the pick that um, her comment was that she's more like the Flintstones and I'm more like the Jetsons. <laughs> what do you think, what percentage of uh, dentists do you think have made that investment in technology for their practice? Un unfortunately, very few. Um, you know, not everything is meant for every practice, but I would say that some of the more diagnostic materials, like the Spectra, like digital x-rays, which is an incredible feature, uh, the diode lasers, intraoral cameras, these are all things I couldn't practice without. Mm -hmm. You know, the nice thing about that Spectra system is it sounds like it almost becomes so objective. It's not even a question of is it, isn't. Correct. It's just cut and dry. It needs to be treated. When the patient, right. When the patient sees the color on the TV screen, it's like, I and mean, sometimes they'll say, we'll do it again. How so, often have you used that machine thought there was decay, opened the tooth, and found out there was the machine was wrong. Never. Amazing, right? Never. And, you know, there's also numbers that, that come with it to, uh, to, to quantify. I'm not really big on the numbers, but the color is 100% accurate. And what about the, you mentioned the laser. What's the benefit to the patient of using a laser? Well, first of all, the laser uh, being used for either tissue recontouring and cosmetic practices and treating periodontal disease, not the same kind of laser that you, you use. Um, first of all, it's really not an invasive uh, procedure. There's no stitches, there's no packing, there's no post-operative discomfort. The tissue doesn't shrink, so we don't have any recession around our crowns or veneers. Um, it's, it's, it's just an amazing product. That's fantastic. I want to get back to designing the smile a little bit. You sure. spoke about imaging and, and that sort of thing. How much input does the patient really have in designing their smile? patient has total input. They will sometimes direct it toward me to complete it. Um, and some patients can't make certain decisions. But I always ask them, what are you looking for? What would you like to see? If I waved a magic wand, and this was all for free, okay? Yeah. If it was all for free, what would you like to see? What color, what length, what size? What are you, look are you looking to rejuvenate? Are you looking to change mm -hmm. yourself entirely? And then we take that uh, along with our diagnostic work and my input from my assistants, because the women have some really good input. And um, we put it all together, and we come up with a game plan. Do people come with a uh, you know, husband, wife, friends? Husband, they, wife, pictures. The whole family. You know, I, yeah, we get people coming in who may be in their, you know, say, later years, and they're bringing in pictures of their uh, their driver's license from high school, you know, or, the, <laughs> or their prom pictures, and they want us to make them look like that again. That's a bit more of a discussion you have to have with them uh, before, <laughs> Absolutely. before you can get that going. That's something. Yeah, expectations are very big. Do you ever get people in that think it's going to be a huge project, and you actually surprise them, and it's... Something much smaller. Without a doubt. You know, some people think it's going to be very lengthy. And when I tell them that once we get started, veneers literally can be two visits. And sometimes if I have somebody who's in a, um, whether it's the entertainment business or high profile uh, in the public eye, and they need to be done really quick, literally in one week, if not two days, mm -hmm. uh, we can have them done. So people don't need to go into Manhattan for this type of high-end cosmetic all. work. Not uh, at all. Sometimes people have in their mind that unless it's, Absolutely. you know, in the city. It's, you don't need uh, to go to Park Avenue or Madison Avenue. It, that's fantastic. I'm sure people appreciate that. Absolutely. Where would you say most of your patients come from? Um, the majority of our patients are local to the Massapequa, people who want to a Seaford area. Uh, we have Amityville. We have Suffolk County, obviously. Are, they, are most of them referred by other patients? People, I would imagine people get their smile. They all their sense, friends see it, yes. and they say, something's different about <laughs> you. I don't know what it is, but you look great. What's yes. your secret? Most, most of the referrals, we actually just did a, uh, a little bit of an uh, analysis in the practice. Most of our new patients are coming from existing satisfied patients. But, you know, you ask about distance. I have patients from uh, out in Montauk, and I think my longest distance patients are from uh, two and a half hours away in Jersey. Wow. You know, you mentioned before if you could wave your magic wand and it was free. I mean, is this cosmetic dentistry, is this sort of beyond the reach of the average person or is, is your average patient the average person? There is no, every, every patient could, could afford to do some form of cosmetics from the limited procedure of bleaching to some of the more sophisticated. Um, it depends upon what you want to do. You know, the, the patients come in not really knowing 
what the options are, and when we explain the whole thing, you'd be surprised that people coming with a preconceived idea of how much this can cost, and then the next thing you know, they made an appointment. And can they finance this type of work? Does it have to be all paid at once? Are there options like that for people? We always work as some form of a financial arrangement. You know, you ever go to the mall? Uh, this is one of my favorite activities. I go shopping, and you see people who are dressed to the nines, fancy pocketbook, fancy smile. bag, fancy jewelry, <laughs> and then they smile. Absolutely. Why do you think that is? They just haven't focused on their mouth. You know, it's easy to buy a coach pocketbook. It's easy to buy Prada shoes or pocketbooks and whatever and dress with Armani suits. It, it doesn't hurt to buy an Armani Absol- suit. There's no Novocaine involved. Right. So how do you, let's talk about that. I mean, probably one barrier for people is just how am I going to stay comfortable? I hate going to the dentist. The fear. How do you keep them comfortable so they can get this done? From the moment you walk into the office, you'll kind of get a sense that we're not your typical office. Uh, we treat the person, not the tooth, which is what I said earlier on. From We have uh, built-in massages uh, in our chairs. We provide you with nitrous oxide if it's during the winter months or if it's cold with the air conditioning. We have fleece blankets. We do everything. Uh, we have uh, you know the music, the TVs. We do everything to make you comfortable. I guarantee that our injection technique is something you've never experienced before. Um, and then by the time we start, you, you know, your, your fears are gone. So they're numb and they're distracted. Totally. And then, and then the beauty is when, when we're done with the procedure, we have a product called Auraverse where if you, know, if you have to leave to go to work, you don't want to drool, you don't want your lips to be kind of funny, we can give you something called Auraverse which will speed up the process of the Novocaine. You know, I would think most people have probably never even had the experience of a dentist really just sitting down, talking to them, and getting to know them. Most people are used to tip back in the hygiene chair, the dentist comes in, you need two fillings, and no, they don't, they don't, they don't have that personal connection like it sounds you, that you make with your patient. True. Um, that's part of the training at the uh, Panky Institute is to know, know the patient. Um, and also we believe that, like the Size Sims commercial, an educated consumer is your best customer. You don't want to, you know, talk too much about things. You don't even want to talk technical. You want to tell the patients, this is what you're looking for. These are some of the ideas we can give you. You know, we show you. Um, what, do you what do you think? Okay. We're almost out of time. Uh, for anybody that's listening, first, tell us your phone number so we can call you. And no problem. The phone number is 516-541-7344. And tell us again what your website was. The website is www.smilecreations, the number four, the letter U, dot com. And where are you located in Massapequa? We're on Five Block Boulevard, Massapequa Park. Excellent. Alan, this was probably one of the best shows we ever had. I want to thank you very much sir, for being on tonight. David, thank this you is, for inviting me. This is Healthy Living Radio. You're listening to Dr. David Scharf. Uh, look forward to talking with you next week. Thanks for tuning in. You've been listening to Healthy Living Radio with your host, Dr. David Scharf. Join us next week for another edition of Healthy Living Radio. 